Okay, well, this is the last video for the algebra flip part chart. So it's tab number nine, which is statistics, your favorite, yay. All right, so there's a lot of things we learned in statistics. So let's first start with box plots. They're also called box and whisker plots sometimes. Anyway, a box and whisker plot, um, there's usually a line above or below or to the left or to the right, it doesn't matter, but we'll have a, let's just make a line below. Um, and then there's a left whisker, and then there's the box, and the box doesn't necessarily have to be symmetrical, so we'll make one that isn't. And then there's a right whisker. And again, the whiskers could be the same length, they might be different, it doesn't matter. And then there could be an outlier somewhere out there that would be just out there. Um, remember that 25% of the data is in the left whisker, 25% in the left-hand side of the box, 25% in the right-hand side of the box, and 25% in the right whisker. There's always 50% of the data from here up because that number right there is the median. So the median, and that's also abbreviated Q2. Then the median of the lower half of the numbers is Q1, and that's called the lower quartile. And then the median of the upper half is called Q3, and it's also called the upper quartile. Remember, if there are an odd number of numbers, the number in the middle is the median, and then you ignore it when you do Q1 and Q3. But if there's an even number of numbers, the two numbers in the middle, you average them together to get the median, and then you don't ignore anybody. You just split straight down the middle. Um, the IQR, or the inner quartile range, is always just the Q3 value minus Q1. Now remember, the measures of central tendency are mean, median, and mode. Uh, range is a statistical question, but it's not a measure of central tendency. Don't forget that the mean is the average. The median is the number in the middle after you put them in order. And then the mode is the number that occurs most often. And mode, there can be no mode, and there can be more than one mode. But there can't be more than one mean or more than one median. Um, if it ever asks you for a percentile rank, the percentile rank is the percentage of data values that are less than or equal to that value. So for example, if you uh, score in the top 1% of all the people that take the test, then you are in the 99th percentile. So that's what percentile rank is. So then the next thing we talked about is we did um, a normal distribution or sometimes called a bell curve. And we talked about the empirical rule. And the thing in the middle of the bell curve is always the mean. Now, in the middle of the box and whisker, it's the median. But in the middle of the bell curve, it's the mean. And 50% of the data is this side, and 50% of the data is this side, because it's a normal distribution. And then what happens is, is from the mean, you could go one standard deviation to the right, or one standard deviation to the left. So this would be one up and one down. And 68% of the data is one standard deviation away from the mean. If you go two standard deviations away, that's 95% of the data. And if you go all the way to three standard deviations away, that's 99.7% of the data. Okay, so that is called the empirical rule. And then some people call it the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. 
Now remember, if this is 68%, from here to here is 34%. If you need to know what percent is from here to here, you would do 95 minus 68 divided by 2. So I think this is 34, and this is 13.5. Um, so again, the 68% of the data is one steer, standard deviation away from the mean, 95% is two away, and 99.7% is three standard deviations away from the mean. Okay, um, and let's see. Then let's talk about, well, we, there were two other things. We did the residuals. Okay, and to remember uh, the residual, there I always say it's a wrap. And the residual is equal to the actual data point minus the predicted data point. So the residual equals the actual data point minus the predicted data point. So you get the actual data point, either it's either the dot on the graph or it is the number in the chart. The predicted is when you plug something into the equation of whatever that line or curve of best fit was. So then when you go to graph the residuals, and let's say this is zero, and it was a good line of best fit or a good curve of best fit, the numbers that you get are kind of small and real close to zero and they kind of go above and below and they're real close and there's no pattern to it and so that would be a good one if the residuals were um, calculated and it was you drew a line when it should have been a curve or something like that then when you go to graph the residuals the dots are going to kind of make a pattern, almost like a parabola. And that means that was a bad line of best fit or curve of best, best fit. So what you want, you want them to alternate, sort of. You want them to, you want the values to be close to zero. And that patterns when graphing residuals are bad. And then the last thing that we did is the correlation coefficient. And the correlation coefficient, the short way to say correlation coefficient is R, which really doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not the head of all math, so I got to go with what they say. And the correlation coefficient is a number that is between negative 1 and 1. Now, it, if it's um, a number that's close to 1 or close to negative 1, it has a strong correlation coefficient. Um, it, the closer it is to 0, it has a weak co uh, correlation coefficient. Now, it's a little bit like slope only because if it goes up to the right, it has a positive correlation, and if it goes down to the right, it has a negative correlation. But other than that, that's the only thing that it has to do with slope uh, because a number can't be bigger than one. Um, so it tells whether you have a positive or a negative correlation. It tells the strength of the correlation. And remember, the closer it is to zero, the weaker it is. And the closer it is to one or negative one, it doesn't matter. the stronger it is. So kind of a way um, to remember it is you can put like zero in the middle and then you can go like this all the way to one and you go like this all the way to negative one and this one would be a super strong negative correlation where, oh goodness, 
and this would be a super strong positive correlation. But like if this is 0.8 and this is negative 0.8, they have the same strength. One of them's just a positive correlation and one of them's just a negative correlation. Um, and the closer it is to this is weak. And if it's in the middle, like in here, then that's just called a moderate correlation. And in middle in here is a moderate correlation. So like if I said the correlation coefficient was 0.5, you would say it's a moderate strong correlation. If I said 0.9, you'd say it's a very strong positive correlation. And if it was like 0.2, you'd say it's a weak positive correlation. And very weak would be like 0.01 positive correlation. And that's pretty much all I wanted to tell you. So we're done with the flip chart.